Jeremy, did you ever weld a three-quarter inch wide gap up with aluminum MIG? I can't say that I ever have. Or I've even tried to attempt it, much less do it. And it done it quite nice, really. So here's how it all started. There we are removing the bumper. Jeremy is removing the bumper, the last piece that was hanging on a thread on the top. The crack on the bottom was pretty clean. So this is a full trailer rebuild. The whole trailer bent three ways from Sunday, completely rolled over. And Jeremy is rebuilding the entire thing with the Propulse 200 and part of it with the Propulse 300, piecing it all back together and making it look, not like new, but making it look very reasonable by the time it's all done. So here are a couple pictures of what it looked like before you see how it's all bent up right there and he's actually able to straighten all this out fill all the missing pieces back in and um, this thing is in rough shape it's really broken and pretzel and cracked over everywhere a bunch of welds like here are overhead welds after pressure washing it and sanding it a little bit getting the oxide layers off everything turned out really nice and I'll walk you through some videos and some pictures of that, most of that project. And um, Jeremy did an outstanding job on this thing. So finally, like a couple years later, I get around to editing this video here. By now the Propulse 200 is obsolete. Either way, a great machine. And um, it's followed by the Propulse 220 MTS, same, same great machine. And just to give you an idea of what you can do if you... If you put your mind to it and if you don't mind putting the hard work into it and really looking at what you can do it's it's amazing what jeremy did here in a matter of like four or five days he had this whole thing pieced back together so here we're going to show you how to weld the back of that bumper back on that you saw us cut out on the top clip there and the bottom fits almost perfect. The top has a really large gap, like half inch, almost three quarter inch gap. And I'm going to show you what you can do with this machine that you can never do with a regular spool gun on your MIG welder. So here I'm dialing the machine in to see how it needs to be. Uh, we got a remote control, a slider set up on there. And I'm making some big tack welds, closing some big gaps here to get everything attached correctly. And then once this is done, I'm welding the vertical up on the outside, on the back side to give it some strength. And then Jeremy's going to fill that big gap on the top, on the middle of the, on the middle of the bumper there, in the middle of the weld. So tacks are finished, here comes the vertical up. All in one smooth run, never stopping, never do the spot, spot, spot thing, just filling it all up real nice. This is 279, just for reference, you know, because when I started at like 320, it was too hot and then I just pulled back to, yeah, you can just walk this like forward and wash and do and whatever. What's that there? Wide open. Wide open is 320. So 320 is good for eighth inch, but because it's a huge ass gap, um, you pull it back somewhat. So you see Jeremy welding here. He's welding that gap on the top weld of the bumper there. Um, you get a glimpse of the arc like right there. Uh, sorry for the lines in there. We didn't have the right filter set up. But you can see how wide the gap is. The welding nozzle on the front is about uh, three quarter inch opening. And he's filling this like moving a left to right motion, never breaking the arc. 
Now of course old Mick habits die hard so instead of pushing the weld Jeremy is pulling the weld which causes a little bit of soot to be on top of it which will wire brush right off. Ideally he would be pulling, uh, pushing the weld not pulling the weld but you can see the the outcome is absolutely phenomenal. There you heard the, ch the pitch change that is when the wire feed range changes together with the voltage a lower pitch is a lower wire feed rate is less heat a higher pitch is a higher wire feed rate and more heat so he's working his way filling all this in one shot if you've ever welded something like this with a spool gun then you know how the spool gun just gouges and lances the material off the sides and just burns it and makes a gap wider and does not really allow to fill the pulse mig machine just gives you the power to control the heat perfect and fill these gaps in a single shot just welding it. If you want to do a nice cover layer over it later on you can do that too. You may not even have to do this. Jeremy, did you ever weld a three-quarter inch wide gap up with aluminum MIG? I can't say that I ever have, or even tried to attempt it, much less do it. And it done it quite nice, really. going up. Jack it up a little bit. Hypertherm makes a pretty decent plasma cutter. I own an 85 myself just like same one Jeremy has. Jeremy actually owns a 65. You know HTP makes an awesome replacement hand torch and very affordable high quality consumables for it. It's absolutely, it, it has been a game changer. I mean my cost in plasma cutting has been cut in half and I for sure cannot tell a difference in performance. It's, they are that good. Now pay a close attention to that multi-stage air dryer. Plasma cutting just is absolutely depending on perfectly clean and dry air. Your cutting capacity and your consumable life goes down the drain right away with the slightest bit of water in the air.
All right, a little bit more trimming, and then piece it all back together. Put your parts in, weld it all up. I don't know where the footage is of the inside, but here's the outside of it. And it's all gonna get literally pieced back together.
All right, take a close look at this here. Here we're like 80% back together. Everything is lined up, squared up, put back, straightened out, under tension, welded back in place, and relief cuts where they were needed. So to minimize the tension, everything bent back in place, and then made relief cuts again to make sure everything fits perfect. And here it's almost done. And the next few pictures here show you how crazy it really was. This whole thing rolled over three ways from Sunday and pretty much just scrap. So they towed it there and Jeremy did an outstanding job rebuilding the entire thing basically. Now here you get a glimpse of what the finished product kind of looked like. I mean overall nice welds, nice for what it is, nice for where it was. Here's the overall view of the shop doing this all indoors. Uh, you can weld MIG aluminum outside with a mild mild wind otherwise you have to block it out. It's best when you do it inside a shop. finally here it is the finished product the trailer outside looking at the repair spot over here looking down the side everything nice and straight looking at the back bumper and all the corners 
you can barely tell that anything ever happened. So and now for everybody who stayed with me that long, here's a bit bonus footage, father and son welding. I'm gonna help you get it on, okay? Okay. Okay, come right over here, right over here. Take it again. Uh-uh, no buttons. All right. You ready? Mm-hmm. All right, put the button down. Who thinks that Jeremy's son and my daughter should have a weld off? Weld off of the five year olds. So if you do, if you made it till like 25 minutes into this video, thank you very much. Give it a thumbs up and leave a comment and see if you want to see the weld off. Alright, we're done. Is that fun?